Why do we do Tai Chi? We do it because we want the benefits of Tai Chi. We love doing the slow movements. It relaxes our bodies. It helps improve our balance. It actually helps our brain so that we're sharper. It helps us be more healthy overall, right? That's why we do Tai Chi. And we know that we can't just do the movements of Tai Chi and expect to get those benefits. We have to apply the underlying principles, things like columns and rotation, being rooted and grounded, the continuous linked without breaks, understanding the breathing, our substantial and insubstantial, moving from the Dantian. There's a lot that goes into getting those benefits. So when we practice, we want to practice by utilizing those underlying principles. But that doesn't mean that you just have to do the form over and over again, thinking about the principles and trying to apply them. You can actually have some fun and practice in a different way. And that way it will enhance your experience. You'll have more fun with it. And doing Tai Chi in a different way, but still applying those underlying principles is going to get you to where you want to go, which is better balance, improved mental acuity, lowering your blood pressure, allowing your body to relax and release stress. So by practicing in a different way, we can get to our benefits. The first um, thing that I want to uh, try is with our daily series, we have the basics of balance form. Clearly, the basics of balance is focused on improving your balance. And in that video, we talk about you know, moving from the Dantian, being rooted and grounded, making sure your columns are intact, understanding your substantial and insubstantial. So all of those things go into the basics of balance form. But what if we try, not forgetting those other principles, but what if we try focusing on breathing, which really doesn't apply to improving our balance, not directly. So let's try the basics of balance form and focus on breathing. So our basics of balance form is very simple. If you don't know it, that's fine. I'll lead you through it. Taking a nice deep breath in, breathe it out. Remember, we're focusing on the breathing. And open. Preparation, breathing in. And breathing out. Now remember, we can't forget the other principles, we have to know our substantial and insubstantial, breathing in and then breathing out as you lift, breathing in and breathing out. Let's do that again, just lifting your knees, thinking about breathing and yet being balanced at the same time, breathing in and Breathing out. Now breathing in, holding the ball, we're going to do brush knee four times. Breathing out as you release that energy. Breathing in as you gather. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. And one more. Breathing in and breathing out. Now you're going to do pheasant stands. Breathing in, breathing out. As you switch to the other side, breathing in and breathing out. One more, breathing in and breathing out. Now repulse the monkey, going back four steps, focusing on your breath. Now 
one more. Then high pat on horse. Good, now you're taking a step back, breathing in, and you're gonna kick, smash, and box the ears. Breathing out. Good, then stepping back, breathing in, same movement, other side. Now breathing out as you kick, smash, and box the ears. Then deflect, intercept, and punch. Take a nice deep breath in. And step out, breathing out. And punch. Pushing chi. Breathing in as you come towards your body. Breathing out. And then breathing in as you return the tiger to the mountain. And breathing out. So it just challenges your body. You've been used to doing the balance form, thinking about balance, and now all of a sudden you have to think about breathing. That's a good challenge because you can't forget about the balance part. In order to do that form, you have to be thinking about your substantial and insubstantial, moving from the Dantian, etc. You know, we also have the basics of stress relief in that daily series. All of these are on our Vimeo membership website. The basics of stress relief, thinking about your breathing when you do that and moving slowly and continuous movement. Well, what if you did that form, thinking about the martial arts applications of each movement and yet still staying relaxed? So we're gonna do something similar. We're not gonna actually do the stress relief Form. You can do that on your own, but we're going to do a different way to practice, but we are going to focus on that relaxation and being rooted and grounded and yet suspended from the crown of our head. I call this form the start and stop form. Really in Tai Chi, we want linked without breaks, right? We want continuous movement. Well, what if we did the form starting and stopping, and at each stoppage, we relax our body, take inventory, make sure we're rooted and grounded, make sure we're still suspended from the crown of our head. We can do this with the 24 form and actually truncate it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. We're not going to do all the movements. It will actually be the 24 form, but we're going to shorten it just a little bit. So do this with me. <clears throat> Again, taking a nice deep breath in. Breathe it out. And open. Now remember, we're not going to do continuous movement. We're going to do each move. Preparation, and we're going to stop, take inventory. Are my shoulders away from my earlobes? Are my shoulders in harmony with my hips? Is my head suspended? Is my body in a good relaxed posture, a good rooted posture? And now move on to part the wild horse's mane. Am I rooted and grounded? Do I have a good, solid, stable stance? Are my arms rounded and relaxed? Now we don't have to do three part the wild horse's mane. We can go right into white crane spreads its wings. This is what I mean by truncating the form. Again, now take inventory. Do you feel like your shoulders are in harmony with your hips? and yet everything is relaxed and rooted. Now moving on to brush knee. Again, am I rooted and grounded? Do I have too narrow of a stance? Do I have too wide of a stance? Am I solid so that I can relax into this movement? Come into your play the guitar. Now repulse the monkey, we're only gonna do two of them. Stepping back, take inventory. 
Are your shoulders relaxed? Are your arms, your elbows dropped? Repulse the monkey. Stop. Again, take inventory. And now we're going to do that ward off sequence, which we learn as a continuous movement. So this you want to really concentrate on starting and stopping. Stepping out. Ward off. Stop. Take inventory. Are my shoulders still in harmony with my hips? Grasp the bird's tail. Am I relaxed or am I overreaching? Roll back. Can I feel my Dantian move and yet be relaxed? Rotate and press. Pushing Chi. So we're totally taking out that continuous movement so that we can make sure we're relaxed. Now normally we would do ward off on the other side, but we don't have to. What's the next movement is single whip. Make sure your elbows are dropped. Make sure your arms are not locked. Make sure everything in your body is relaxed. Wave hands like clouds. We only need to take one step. This is a very relaxing movement all in itself, right? But here we can stop as we start our single whip and make sure that we understand where is our weight, make sure our elbows are dropped, and that we can come into a relaxed single whip. High pat on horse. Stepping forward. Kick smash and box the ears. This is an interesting one to try to start and stop in that it's very hard to stop as you're here, right? And kick, smash, box the ears, staying relaxed, kicking left. Now with our snake creeps, this is one that we don't relax in a lot. So try to relax your body as you go through that snake creeps. Stop. Bring your weight over that left. Come into your pheasant stance. Now normally we would do another snake creeps, but we don't have to. Hold the ball to the right. Step out. Fair lady works the shuttle. Make sure those elbows are dropped, that you're relaxed, that you're in a good solid stance. Pick the needle up from the sea bottom. Come up, block, fan through the back, stop. See if you're relaxed, make sure you're not overreaching. And as you come into your deflect, intercept, and punch, stepping out. Make sure you're in a good, solid stance, not too narrow. Stepping up, allowing that left leg to be completely empty. Stepping out. Pushing Chi. Stop. Turning into your final, return the tiger to the mountain. and close. So that's what I mean by practicing in a different way. You can even truncate the form. You don't have to do all the movements. We don't often think about starting and stopping, but that helps us take inventory as we move to make sure that we are relaxed, that we are rooted and grounded, that we are keeping our shoulders in harmony with our hips, all of the things that we need to get the benefits of Tai Chi. And yes, one of those underlying principles is that continuous movement, but we've only taken away that principle just for a second, just for a practice, so that we can focus on the other things. And then we can add back in continuous movement. So there was a challenge that I made for you last week in doing the form, focusing on different principles at when you're facing in different directions. So we're going to try that today as well. When we're facing 
the front here, we're going to be thinking about our columns. When we're facing this direction, which would be west if this is north, when we're facing this direction, we're going to be thinking about substantial and insubstantial. When we're facing to the back, we're going to be thinking about our rotation and moving from the Dantian. And when we face this direction, we're going to be thinking about that energy flow, that ball of energy. Where is our energy going? Are we actually putting it into our opponent? Do we have a real consciousness of that ball of energy? So let's do the 24 form, thinking about those different directions, challenging our brain so that we have to think about the different principles. So remember, this direction is columns. Taking a nice deep breath in. Breathe it out, sinking down. Feel your shoulders in harmony with your hips. Open. Preparation. Holding that ball. Now we're going to change direction. What do we need to be thinking about now? We need to be thinking about substantial and insubstantial. So change your focus. Think about which foot now becomes empty as it steps forward. Part the wild horse's mane. Rocking back. Feeling that differentiation of substantial and insubstantial. Part the wild horse's mane. Stepping up, now the weight has to come into the right so the left can be completely empty for our white crane spreads its wings. Right arm comes down, left arm comes across, that left foot is empty, so it moves into our brush knee left. Feeling that substantial and insubstantial change. Don't lift that right leg until it's completely empty to step into your brush knee. One more brush knee. Remember, you want the choice to step forward. It means you understand you're empty and full. Stepping up, all the weight comes into your right. That left leg is completely empty for play the guitar. Why is it empty? Because it's the next one to move for your repulse the monkey. Now empty that right foot so now it can step back, repulse the monkey. Empty that left foot. And now one more, that right foot becomes completely empty. And now we're going to change orientation. Remember, this is columns. But now we're going to kind of put columns and substantial and insubstantial together in our ward off sequence. Where's the weight forward? Are my shoulders in harmony with my hips? Now I roll back. I'm not overreaching, but I understand my weight comes a little bit forward. Then back. And then forward into our pushing chi. Then as we change, making sure our columns are still intact. And now as we turn, we want to think about columns and that ball of energy. Where is that ball? We have hold of this ball between our hands here. We're guiding that energy in our roll back. Pushing it into our opponent in that G energy. And then on for pressing, for pushing chi. And as we turn back towards the front, we're again thinking about our columns, making sure our shoulders are in harmony with our hips and our single whip. As we do our wave hands like clouds, we want to make sure that we're not overemphasizing that flow of trying to flow like this. We want to keep our columns intact. One more. And then single whip. High pat on horse. What orientation are we now? 
substantial and insubstantial. Stepping forward with that left leg. Then we have to rock back. And then all the weight comes onto this left as we kick smash and box the ears. Now we're turning to the south. Think about rotating, moving from the Dantian, bringing that Dantian over your base of support so that you can kick left. Forming a bird's beak, stepping out with your snake creeps. Again, think about that Dantian lowering and rotating and bringing it over your left leg. Now we're thinking about where's that ball of energy? It's in front of us to come into our pheasant stands. As we turn, columns. Do our shoulders stay above our hips as we do our snake creeps? Bringing our dantian over that base of support again, holding that ball of energy and pheasant stands. Holding that ball to come into your fair lady works the shuttle. Holding the ball. Using that energy to block something coming up at us, coming down onto our head. Then where is that energy and pick the needle up? As we come up and we fan through the back, pushing our energy into our opponent. Now we're turning to the south. Think about rotating from the Dantian, bringing the Dantian over that base of support to again rotate into our deflect. Now we're thinking about substantial and insubstantial. Intercept and punch. Pushing chi. And as we return the tiger to the mountain, we again think about our columns. We're not bending from the waist. Lowering that center of gravity. And close. So there's a lots of different ways to practice. You can pick apart individual movements and apply the underlying principles. You can take one movement and apply all the principles to that. Or you can think about when I'm doing part the wild horse's mane, I'm only going to be thinking about substantial and insubstantial. Or just practicing your snake creeps and trying to relax in that snake creeps pheasant stands. That's a really good challenge for everyone. So figuring out different ways to practice adds interest to what you're doing. It adds a uh, challenge to your brain. It adds uh, a, a level of sophistication to your Tai Chi in that you're not just allowing your muscles to take over. You have to actually focus and stay in the moment to make sure that you're practicing with the principle that you're thinking about at the time, whichever way you're practicing, whether you're doing start or stop or directional changes or using a different form and thinking about a certain principle. All of these ways of practicing are good for your practice. They're ways to enhance the way you're going to get the benefits of Tai Chi. Mm -hmm.